Charlie Dixon and the decision to manage him or the yeah. Sort? yeah, no, Charlie was, um, I was really, we made a decision before the start of the year, to be honest. Charlie was not never playing round six, and that was our decision at the start of the year. And uh, unfortunately, he'd been a little bit crook this week on Monday and Tuesday, but if he had to, you know, if he was needed to play this week for us, we would be able to pick him. And we've decided, as I said, six weeks ago, in fact, probably longer than that, before the pre-season, got into action that we were going to look after him more than we have ever done to make sure that we uh, try and get him more games from him, more minutes from him and more contests from him. So when you mapped out his season, how many games did you think he would play? Ah, uh, look, the, the number will, will, I think what we should look forward to is that this won't be the last time we give Charlie a rest. How much does it go into, I guess, science or, you know, like kind of numbers behind it by gut feel? Uh, as much as anything, it's about minutes played, contests involved, and, and as everyone knows, he, he's in a lot of contests, so we're very mindful of what he does in a week-in, week-out basis, but we're also very mindful of what he does for us as a team. Is he all right? Is he looking at proper in his ankle? Yeah, no, his ankle's fine. As I said, he'd be fine to play, other than he's got a bit of a sniffle. So he's, um, funny as he said, he said, you know, when you know you're having a rest, that's when you get you do get sick, and that's probably what's happened with him. He's just let go a little. How's it taken? with your little, little spray that he got? He didn't cop a spray. It's, it's interesting. Cool. Everyone thought he got a spray. We were actually laughing about what was going on between. It looks looks like he's having a he's having a fair crack. He's having a fair crack about something outside his control and outside my control. So I said, mate, it's you know the rules. You know what how it works, and just, you just got to suck it up. And um, he went back out and done what he had to do and marked the next ball. I think so. It was a good result. How's sure. that making this approach? I guess you kind of said you know um, it's hard to tell him to do, do something. You know, get him to, um, to stop. You know, going as hard. For the ball, how is he taking you know, to say we're going to manage you at this point, at this point, at this point? I think he's been really open to it because he knows himself that you know he's got X amount of minutes that he can play, and that more often than not, the way he plays, <laughs> he's, he's you know he's only a couple of contests away from the next collision, and that that can hurt him at times. So he's he's been really really supportive of the decision, and good on him because he knows where he's at. Charles, you going to use Soldo and Sweet. Who does more of the rucking and who does Which, more? Whichever's required on the day. We'll work with that then. Depending on the opposition as well? Yeah, that's right. It's depending on what's going on in the game and what's happening, we'll, we'll operate. Um, we've got, we, what we do know, we've got two very, very good ruckmen and who are very capable of being contest players in our front half. So we're, we're OK with whichever way we go. How much work has Jordan done on, I guess, with adding that forward element to his game, given he's probably been more of a pure, pure ruckman? Well, I think he's been doing that for a good period of time, even his time at the Bulldogs. You know, he, he knew and... and the challenge of getting in front of English was pretty big, so he had to add another string to his bow. So I think he spent a fair bit of time working on that and certainly has spent a lot of time with us working on that. As much as the reason about bringing them in as well is the fact that they've got a really strong, Essendon have got a really strong rough duo in gold standard. Collingwood. 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 Oh, I'm letting a man. Okay. <laughs> 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 Who, who do have a couple anyway? Who could yeah. Collingwood do have good, yeah. very good ruck combination, and so yes, one of the challenges was it will certainly not hurt us to have two very much recognised ruckman against two very much recognised ruckman. When you mapped out round six, is this the sort of way you think you would have gone about replacing him? Obviously, in an ideal world, you would have Ollie and Jeremy both available. Um, yeah, it's probably fair. I think that's that's reasonable, but we're also very comfortable with the fact, and I have we have forecast for a while that. We're not against the opportunity to play two rucks. And, and I think the, the important part about that is, as I said, both boys have shown the capability. Jordan kicked two goals last week. I mean, they've both shown the capability of hitting the scoreboard. Have you spoken to Jess this week? I guess another kind of week where he's been in Hellas probably. The, yeah, well, yeah. Sure the run reads Look, up, yeah. We, we all know what's going on and we're really clear. And I, all I can say is that I know Jeremy's been very sincere with the way he's thought about this whole situation he's been in. And, and this week, I think he cleared it up again immediately. So. You, you caught injuries at the wrong time last year, right in the guts, right in the, the business end of the, of the year. Are you taking a cautious approach this year? It seems like with Jason um, and a few others, Ollie as well. Yep. It seems like you're yeah, really no, really I've been public and on record to say that our challenge is to, to one, win enough games to, to qualify at the end of the season, but also to give ourselves the best chance when we get there to be as healthy as we can possibly. 23 games of AFL football is damn tough. When it's Collingwood, it's the AFL Premier, it's the MCG and all those elements get added in. How do you define what this game is? We, we all build it up as you know, a big test of court and all that sort of but how do you define it? Round six against a very good team on their home deck. It's tough. It's always going to be and every week is and it's not that much difference. Um, look, we're going over with the mindset that we're going over to get a win and come back. The uh, reality is they're probably turning up with the same thoughts so it's going to be an interesting contest every game is as we've seen last week. Go to the wire and make sure you're strong enough to hang in.
What, 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 does, what chance does it give you to prove something? What, what no. do you want to prove on it? No, I just want us to continue to, to play our brand of football. And if we do that and we get the win, that will be a great, great outcome for us. It's not going to mean any more to that, you know, at the end of round six. It will mean a lot more at the end of round 23, depending on how many games we've won. I'll try, how, I'll how try again. The, sorry, how does the club um, deal with uh, social media podcasts, those sorts of things? What sort of restrictions do you have to have on players? You need to ask the media team with the guidance and the education that we give our players and all that stuff. And um, that's not ne technically not one for me, but I know they're very well briefed. Is it, is it hard? Because it's, it is a changing landscape. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard. It's a different world. It's different for me, I can tell you that. Um, but um, I embrace the world. I embrace the new world. And I think that's OK. It's just education is really important. Collingwood's Scott Panabry comes into the game. It's been named as quite a rib issue. Do you subscribe to the theory about you know, going after players or at least making life a bit tougher for them when they go to the game sore? Is that of a bygone area, do you think? Yeah, a bit in the past, probably, but um, Scott Pendlebury's been a great player, so I'd more worry about the great player and than anything else. And the Collingwood team collectively are a real challenge. And you know, Pendles won't be out there. He's played a lot of footy. He won't be out there unless he's 100% perfect. What's, What's the plan for Nick Sorry? What's the plan for Nick Well, he'll be playing for Collingwood. Coming <laughs> from you. From from your perspective? <laughs> yeah, he'll be a number of people that we're concerned about. Will and Drew take him again? He'll be one of the people that we'd be concerned about, and whether, whether Willem or Ollie or, or Connor or Zach or, or, or Jason Horn Francis, I'm just trying to think of all my midfielders I can possibly give you, because we do get caught in this one a bit. Nick Dacos' is star has been and proven to be. I've done for a Lockie Jones up there since yeah, the Lockie Jones, could, last Lockie last Jones could play on him too. Do you expect them, your boys to get attention? Maybe, maybe Connor, Zach or Jason? Oh, I don't, I don't, that's all my control, I'm not quite sure, we, the game's a bit different, there's not too much, you know, and even, even the, you know, the Willem stuff or anything that the run with players are a bit different today than what they were in the past. Okay, Britain Sanderson's noted your players make more mistakes than anyone else in the league, but they keep going, they don't go into a shell, so what's that say about them, your game plan and your wish for them to be? what you call daring and brave. Maybe we're making too many mistakes, I better calm them down a little bit. No, look, that's the way we play, we play with freedom, we play with courage. Um, we, we, we attack the game and when we like the game played that way and um, you know, with that becomes mistakes and we're, we're very comfortable to embrace mistakes. Jason had been unwell going into last week's game and still found a way despite not having a big impact <coughs> overall still kicks one of the crucial goals. Would you expect this week it will be able to have a bit more of an impact given he's had a proper week? Yeah, well, we, we hope so, but I mean, you don't, you don't know what, just whether he was sick or not, you don't always just play absolutely outrageous football, and it's hard when you have such a high level, you know, and that's what we get with some of our, with some of our mids, that they have such a high level, but, you know, we expect Josh just to play his role in the team. Hopefully, that's as good as he can play, because that's pretty good. Sorry, has anyone asked about both, or am I that late for no. the how, how, How's Travis? Is it, was, it, was it a setback he suffered, or has it just been caught? No, it's yeah. again, it's a, it was a sore back, and, and they, they just behave differently at times he's he's a I would say he's a little frustrated because he thought he'd be absolutely right to play this week but he's a little frustrated that he can't quite do everything he needs to and again risk we just don't take him hasn't been the start for Colin whether they probably expected but I mean how kind of wary are you that they you know can all of a sudden probably become you know team that was arranged from his their pressure's back they're the MCG in front of their faithful um don't get much bigger test I don't think I have the absolute most respect you can for uh, clearly they're reigning premiers and you've got to respect everything about what they do as a football club. So that venue, the MCG, it defines a lot of teams. It, you've won the past three. Why, why have you found that edge to, to winning at the G now? Uh, look, it, there's so many things that go into why you do and don't win at different games or different venues. It's just one of those things that happen for us at the moment. You know, our, our last loss at the G was against Colin. So I'm sure they'll be drawing on that.